Welcome to Explainer Insight. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Fluke released in the year 1995. The movie begins with a man named Thomas P. Johnson chasing his friend and business partner Jeff Newman down a two-lane county road. Tom is urging Jeff to pull over, but Jeff continues to speed. Suddenly, a truck appears in front of Tom's car, and he's forced to quickly swerve his car off the road. As a result, Tom's car is sent flying, ultimately crashing into a tree. The movie then cuts to a female golden retriever and her three puppies, which includes a multicolored puppy that live in a secluded corner of a city. One day, the golden retriever and her puppies are picked up by the city's authorities and taken to a pound. Eventually, all puppies except the mutt puppy are adopted and the animal shelter decides to put the puppy down. However, the puppy bites the city employee and manages to escape. The baby runs to his mother, but he is forced to flee when the shelter employees start chasing him. Strangely, the puppy keeps having strange dreams where he sees a woman and a boy in the city. The puppy is noticed by an elderly homeless woman named Bella that takes him in. For some reason, Bella's ring also reminds the puppy of Jeff Newman proposing to his wife, Carol Johnson, under Bella's care. The puppy grows bigger to entertain people and earn a living. Bella plays the shell game with the puppy. One day, a pedestrian calls the puppy's ability to beat Bella's game a fluke, and Bella decides to name the dog Fluke. Several months pass by, and Bella grows sick. One day, she passes away in her sleep, and Fluke is once again left on his own. However, Fluke is soon found by a streetwise dog named Rambo. Rambo befriends him and teaches him how to pee like a dog. Rambo also takes him to see a man named Bert that runs an eatery. Afterwards, Rambo takes him to his home, a junkyard run and owned by a man named Boss. Their flu continues to have dreams about Tom and his family. Fluke also notices a magazine with Jeff on the cover page for introducing a breakthrough brake system to the world. It finally dawns on Fluke that he was once a man named Thomas P. Johnson, who died in a car crash. Fluke is sure that Jeff conspired to eliminate him in the former life to take over their business. Fluke shares the revelation with Rambo, but he calls it nonsense and advises him to ignore such dreams and thoughts. One day, Rambo catches a man named Sylvester stealing from Bert and barks at the thief to alert Bert. However, Bert shuts the dog down for disturbing the peace at the eatery on his way out. Sylvester deliberately steps on Rambo's tail to teach him a lesson for trying to rat him out, but Rambo retaliates by biting Sylvester's leg. Later, Sylvester threatens to call animal control on the dog, so Boss is forced to pay him to keep him quiet. Boss then punishes the dogs for getting in trouble even during his punishment. Flu continues to dream about his family. One day, when Boss is busy with his work, Flu calls Carol's number from memory. The call connects, and Carol speaks from the other end, finally proving that these aren't mere dreams but memories. After becoming sure of his previous life, Flu again talks to Rambo about it, and this time, Rambo admits having knowledge about it. However, when Fluke reveals his plan to reunite with his family, Rambo announces that he's not going to help him find his family as Rambo proceeds to leave. Sylvester shows up with a group of men that abduct Fluke and take him into a cosmetics company for experiments. During the experiments, Rambo breaks into the facility and knocks the lead scientist out, prompting Sylvester to run away in fear. Rambo then releases all the animals from their cages. Afterwards, Rambo leads Fluke out of the facility, however, as they flee. Sylvester returns with the security and shoots Rambo. They manage to escape to the woods, but Rambo is fatally shot. A dying Rambo tells Fluke about his past. It's revealed that the black and white snapshot of a man in a sailor suit on Bert's wall was Rambo's former self. Moreover, Bert was his brother, and he reveals that he wishes to smell the sea again. It's suggested that Rambo died in the line of duty in his previous life after Rambo passes away. Fluke seeks out his surviving wife, Carol and son Brian. He travels four miles. Who his son's school after waiting for hours, Brian finally appears, 
and he has picked up by his mother, Carol Fluke immediately springs to Carol's car, frightening the life out of her. Carol tries to get rid of the dog, but he is persistent. After failing to impress, Carol Fluke tries to charm Brian, but Carol proceeds to drive away. However, Fluke refuses to give up and follows them home. Fluke ultimately manages to charm Carol with his typical doggy tricks, and she lets him into the house for one meal. However, Brian convinces Carol to let him keep Fluke until they find his owner. They give Fluke a good bath and welcome him into their life. Fluke tries to drop hints to Brian that he's his father, but the boy only sees it as some sort of Christmas miracle. Fluke also tries to drop hints to Carol, but without success at night. Carol gives Fluke a small closet to sleep in, but Fluke sneaks out after everyone goes to sleep and wanders around the house after tucking his son to bed. Fluke resigns for the night next to Carol. Over the course of the next few days, Fluke gets to know his family better. He also spends his day playing with Brian, which Tom never had time for when he was alive as a man. He realizes how precious every moment is. He hopes that somehow, sooner or later, he will find a way to tell them who he really is. One day, Jeff shows up at their home and Fluke attacks him, suspecting that his human death was caused by his former business partner. Astonished Carol helps Jeff grab Fluke and throw him out of the house, much to Brian's dismay. Jeff also calls Animal Control to get the violent dog out of the property, prompting Fluke to go into hiding. Later that night, Brian sneaks Fluke into his room in the heavy rainfall. After Brian falls asleep, Fluke heads out of the room and eavesdrops on Jeff and Carol's conversation. Carol brings up Tom and expresses regret for not being aware about what Tom was going through at work. Jeff comforts her, and one thing leads to another, and the two make out much to Fluke's dismay. The next day, Fluke sneaks out of the house and heads to Tom and John's company. Meanwhile, when Brian wakes up with a fever and tries to go out to look for Fluke, Carol sends him back to bed before heading into the building. Fluke makes it a point to pee on Jeff's car. He also overhears Jeff talking to an office worker named Rose. Rose asks Jeff about Carol, and he tells her that she is much better than before, but she still misses Tom. Jeff further adds that he too misses his late friend. Fluke then sneaks into Tom's office, and he recalls working late into the night and cancelling his dinner date with his wife. Suddenly, the phone begins to ring, and as Jeff walks into the room, Fluke sneaks out. Carol speaks on the other end of the line and tells Jeff that Brian has got out of the house to look for Fluke. Jeff tells her to calm down, promising to find Brian. Jeff then swiftly gets in his car and heads to Carol's home on his way. There he comes under attack from Fluke, who was hiding in his car in the backseat. Jeff quickly loses balance and the car crashes into a brick pillar. Fluke also sustains injury from the accident, and he suddenly regains the rest of his memory. He recalls having an argument with Jeff on the day he died. Jeff had designed a prototype for a brake system that was twice as efficient as any braking system around the world. However, Tom wasn't happy with it because it was twice as expensive, which meant less profit for the company. When Jeff tried to remind Tom that they founded the company to do something positive, Tom got upset because he was overwhelmed by the responsibility of taking care of his family. This led to an argument, and when Tom got aggressive, Jeff stormed out of the office. However, Tom started following Jeff in his car, demanding to speak to him. Tom kept ordering Jeff to pull over while recklessly driving on the wrong side of the road until he swerved off to avoid hitting an oncoming truck and died. Jeff rushed to Tom's side and tried to rescue him, but without success. It finally dawns on Fluke that Tom was just a distant workaholic that pushed his family and friends away. Everything had been Tom's fault, and Jeff had always been his true friend. Stricken with remorse, Fluke goes over to help Jeff, just like he did when Tom met with an accident, and an injured Jeff seemingly realizes Fluke's true identity. However, Jeff bears no ill will and tells Fluke to go find Brian before the ladder catches hypothermia from the falling snow, regretful over his actions. Fluke barks for a passing driver to help Jeff before running off on. A hunch Fluke goes to the graveyard where Tom had been buried and luckily finds Brian there. 
it turns out Brian had been locked in by an unaware groundskeeper at home. Carol also figures out that Brian is at the cemetery after looking at his drawings. Luke huddles with Brian to keep him warm until Carol arrives at the cemetery and breaks open the gates with her car. Carol carries Brian into the car, and he tells her that he had a dream in which Fluke spoke to him. Apparently, Fluke told him not to cry before revealing that he had to go away. Carol then tries to coax Fluke to come home with them. However, Fluke digs away at the snow in front of Tom's tombstone to show Carol who he really is by uncovering the word forever at the bottom. A phrase he often said to her as a human Carol is left speechless and lets Fluke leave without objection with a heavy heart. Fluke departs and entrusts his family to Jeff for their happiness. Tom reveals that he had to leave because he finally accepted that he can no longer be the family man he should have been, and that he should just cherish the life he has now, which he hadn't done back then, far away and some time later, while resting under a tree on a farm by himself. Fluke is reunited with Rambo, who has reincarnated as a squirrel. Fluke couldn't be more happy and the two chat the day away. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.